Good day, everybody. Kevin Trudeau here. Today, I'm going to be talking about money, how to make money, how to create wealth, how to manifest physical things in your life, primarily finances and money to achieve financial freedom and financial independence. And why should you listen to me? What do I have to say? There's a lot of people on the internet these days. As a matter of fact, way too many. Probably thousands of people who come off as experts on various subjects. And primarily, there's a lot of people out there about how to create wealth, how to create money, et cetera, et cetera. And there, many of them are very well-intentioned. You know, but why should you listen to me? Number one, you don't have to. You can shut this off and say, forget about it. And you can uh, figure it out on your own. You can listen to your dumb, stupid brother-in-law. <clears throat> you can listen to your friends and family who are all broke who think they know everything about everything as they're telling you their stories over their fifth beer or their second marijuana joint. <laughs> you, can, you can listen to those folks. I left a few videos on this channel about why you should listen to me or at least consider it. And look, I don't have to be here. I know this stuff. Bottom line is this. Have you generated businesses and companies of over a billion dollars? And who are you listening to? Are you listening to people that have started from scratch, sat down in their basement, formed a company, and then several years later generated over a billion dollars in sales? Or how about five billion in sales? Or how about 10 billion in sales? Or 25 billion? Over my lifetime, $25 billion in sales around the world in today's dollars. That's kind of the estimate. If you are watching, have you given away over $300 million to charities over your lifetime? Have you had the Rolls Royces and the Ferraris and the Bentleys? Have you had the private chefs? Have you had the, the butlers? Have you had six mansions worth hundreds of millions of dollars around the world fully staffed? with gardeners, maids, chefs, uh, people who manage and run the property full-time? full, full time. If you had companies with over 3,500 employees, well, maybe there's some things that I know that you may find helpful. Forget all that. Maybe you're watching and you just want to make an extra $10,000 a month extra. Increase your income, maybe 50% from what it is now. Maybe you want to manifest goals, dreams, and desires. Well, I'm going to give you a couple little things here that you can apply that work. It's not anything I invented. It was what I was taught back in the 70s by people that were incredibly wealthy. I understood very clearly that in order to be the best, you have to be trained and taught by the best. I was very fortunate, even though my dad was a welder, working for the GE, a union worker. My mom was a full-time homemaker, and I never went to college, and we grew up in a very lower, middle-class, blue-collar home. It was about 1,000 square feet, uh, one bathroom in the whole house. So I didn't come from that wealth, but I was very fortunate that I was introduced to an organization called the Brotherhood, which I talked about in my books and, and so forth. And I was trained on how to manifest things in the physical universe. So I want to share with you today some things that have not only worked for me, but have worked for the people that taught me, but also many of the people over the years that I've taught. You know, there was a hundred people, over a hundred people that worked with me over the years since the early 80s that I trained and taught some of these techniques to. They didn't even know what was happening. And they all became multimillionaires. And they all became this, these incredibly successful, wealthy people. And not only just manifesting physical things, but also, most importantly, being centered, being um, have a sense of security and certainty. And to some degree, some more than others, a sense of joy bubbling up within them. Uh, so let me give you one of the greatest kept secrets that wealthy people throughout the world, throughout history, have utilized to create massive amounts of wealth. Some of you are familiar with Napoleon Hill. 
Napoleon Hill wrote the book Think and Grow Rich. Many people don't know that he wrote before that a series of articles that were actually published in uh, some magazines called The Law of Success in 16 Lessons. It actually started off with 15 lessons because the 16th lesson was too powerful. And then it became the law of success in 16 lessons. Henry Ford at the time, who was one of the individuals that, now keep in mind, Henry Ford, we don't even think about Henry Ford, but Henry Ford was one of the richest men in the world, uh, started from zero and, be, and became one of the richest men in the world, as did Andrew Carnegie in the steel industry. Ford was in the automobile industry. Uh, J.P. Morgan was in the banking and electric industry. People forget that J.P. Morgan teamed up with Edison to create Edison General Electric, which later became General Electric, and he became one of the richest guys in the world uh, in finance and, electri and selling electricity and building the electric infrastructure in, in the country. <clears throat> Him and a guy named Westinghouse who teamed up with Tesla. So he had these magnets of industry that were the richest people on the planet, and they started from zero. J.P. Morgan's father was wealthy, but Ford started from zero. Carnegie started from zero. Carnegie and Steel, Ford in, in the automobile business. And Napoleon Hill met with these people, learned from them, observed them, and then wrote down what he found were the secrets to their success, starting from zero and becoming massively wealthy. Because Napoleon Hill understood that who do you listen to? You listen to somebody who has what you want and has been where you are. Ford came from nothing, became wealthy. Carnegie came, started with nothing, became wealthy. J.P. Morgan you really couldn't listen to per se because his dad was super wealthy, so he didn't come from nothing. came from wealth. Okay, so maybe you kind of put him off to the side, but you still observe. Edison started with nothing and became incredibly wealthy. So you look at these uh, industry magnets, if you will. Vanderbilt was in the railroad industry, again, started with nothing and, and built this amazing uh, uh, wealth and business. So Napoleon Hill codified, if you will, one of the first times ever, the pattern for success. This is what the common denominators were, that these wealthy people, and not just those few, there was over 100 people that he uh, interviewed over a 20-year period of time, and he codified it, but he left a lot of things out because of pressure from the wealthy people. Uh, Henry Ford was known to say, if this material is published and my workers use this material, who's going to work in my factories? Because they'll all be creating wealth. So it was watered down over the years. Most people who read this material really didn't understand it and didn't apply it properly. It's like following a recipe, but the recipe isn't exactly clear. And I remember Julia Childs, who wrote, uh, she was a great uh, chef who had a TV show on PBS, and she uh, wrote a book called How to Master the Art of French Cooking. And in that was one recipe, Bouf Bourguignon, which is beef burgundy, right? There was one uh, part of the recipe, and it says, uh, uh, slice mushrooms and brown them. That was the instruction. She figured that people knew how to slice mushrooms, and people knew how to brown them. And she would give this recipe to people, and she would watch them actually follow the recipe and cook. And out of 50 people, not one of them sliced the mushrooms correctly. They either did it too thin or too thick. And not one of them knew how to brown mushrooms. They just chopped them up, threw them in a pan, and effectively they never got brown because there was too many mushrooms. It would steam, and they would never get the mushroom would never touch the surface of the pan long enough to brown. So she had to rewrite the instructions and in saying, you slice a mushroom three times, make three pieces. That's the correct size of the mushroom. And then you have to actually place each mushroom on the pan and never crowd the mushrooms and actually take some tongs, not a fork, because that'll poke it and it'll release steam. You let it brown and then you flip them over like a little hamburger so you brown both sides. So you actually have to do three or four batches to brown them properly. I guess the point is, these instructions that people think they're applying, they're not applying properly, and therefore they don't get the results. So if you're looking to make money, I'm going to share with you some things with very specific instructions, and I'm going to share with you today what really is probably one of the best-kept secrets 
that the wealthy use to make money. Now, Andrew Carnegie does talk about it, but it's kind of skipped over. And when you look at people around the world who are trying to make money, I, I don't find people that are using this technique at all. It's just not there. But those who do, all of a sudden create massive amounts of wealth. So think about that. What is the greatest kept secret to making money that the wealthy have used throughout the centuries? And if you look in today's world, let's look at the wealthy people today that we know. Some of you are still familiar with Sam Walton, although he passed away, started with nothing, became one of the richest men in the world. Many of you are familiar with Jeff Bezos of Amazon, one of the richest men in the world. Elon Musk started with nothing, became one of the richest men in the world. Stephen Jobs with Apple started with nothing, became one of the richest men in the world. And there's a whole bunch of others that you never even hear about because they're not in the media that started with nothing and became some of the richest men in the world. If you grab the Forbes 500 list, uh, or the Forbes list of the wealthiest people on the planet, you just check them off. Ch cross off the ones who come from royalty, although they still use this technique. But if you look at all of those people, whether they came from wealth or whether they started with nothing, they all use all, let me say it again, they all use this secret. Many things that are common denominators are not used by everyone. But this is the only one, this is the only principle of success or technique of success that is used by every single successful person without exception. And I guarantee it's something you are not using. And if you use this just one technique, your income will go up, your ability to make money will go up, your ability to get excited about creating wealth or manifesting things in your life will go up. Your happiness level will go up. Will go up. Your sense of purpose and mission will go up dramatically. And you'll have a sense of joy and peace within you, whether you have money or not, because you're in the process of making money. It's, it's called being in the creative zone, being in the process of creation, which is when we're the happiest. And at the end of the day, it's not about making money. It's really about being joyful and happy whether you have money or not, is almost irrelevant. Some of you have a hard time believing that. You say, well, let me, let me make a lot of money first, and then I'll tell you. Well, if you're happy now when you're not making money, you'll make money a lot faster. So let me tell you what the secret is. All the wealthy people on the planet in the last 100 years, 500 years, thousands of years, every one of them, without exception, were part of a group. They were part of a organization, a society, a club, or some association with other like-minded people that pulled for one another. Now, this is different than the mastermind group, which we'll also talk about, but it's similar. So these two things are actually, they're two parts of the same but they are two different parts. But this, this secret, number one, all the wealthy people are part of an association or group or organization or club with like-minded people that pull for each other, and then they break it down into a mastermind of people. This is the small group of people that are all working on the same mission, the same exact purpose, and they work in harmony together. These are the two secrets. Let's talk about the first one first. What type of group or organization? If we look throughout history, wealthy people associate with wealthy people. They associate with winners. It all comes down to the word association. Who are you associating with? You can't be associating with losers and expect to become successful. Your income is actually going to be the average of your five best friends. Now think about this. This is very significant. If we look just today, forget the past, let's just look in real time today, reality. We take the Harvard alumni group. You look at people on that Forbes 400 list. You look at people that have made not a million dollars, because a million dollars, quite frankly, in today's world is nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
really is nothing. You can start a company and have a valuation of four or five million dollars in a, a year. I mean, in, oh, look at I'm worth this. It's nothing. You really have to start at a hundred million dollars. Who has a net worth cash or cash equivalents of a hundred million dollars? That's really the number. And who's earning income of at least a million dollars a year income? Those are the two factors in today's world that kind of qualify somebody for saying, hey, I kind of know how to make money. If you're not making a million dollars a year, you don't know how to make money. If you don't have a net worth, of, now net worth is secondary. You can either have one of, of these, but ideally you have both. And the reason why I say ideally, but you don't have to, is because some people don't want to achieve or accumulate wealth. They give most of their money away. Like in my particular case, I, I wasn't married, didn't have any children. I didn't want to start accumulating wealth. That wasn't my objective. My objective was to accumulate massive amounts of, of um, uh, business that could positively impact people and do billions in business and give it back. Give it back to the community, give it back to the uh, customers, give them more than, they, than, they, uh, I, uh, more than I promised, uh, give to the staff, give to the community, give to charities. And so was, I, I took a nice income, always you know, in the millions and millions a year, and had all the accoutrements of a nice lifestyle. But in terms of accumulating wealth, that wasn't my thing. Some people want to accumulate wealth. They want to pass it down generations and so forth. And there's no right or wrong here. There's no judgment. So those are the two, two kind of things. So if you look at somebody who's got $100 million in, 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 in net worth and earns a million dollars a year or earns millions and millions of dollars a year consistently and has profitable companies and so forth, now you're, you're saying, okay, what do they do? Let's, let's, these are people that have what you want, lots of money, lots of uh, financial freedom, lots of income. And if they started off with nothing, okay, let's, let's look at the common denominators. I mean, there's only one. They're all part of some group. They're either part of the Harvard alumni group. They're part of a exclusive country club. You know, many country clubs, you, you want to join, not because you're playing golf or tennis at the country club. You join the country club so that you can meet and mingle and associate with other wealthy people. Success breeds success. A wealthy person has an energy field around them that will rub off on you. Even if they don't say anything, even if they don't teach you anything with words, just being in their presence, their energy affects you in a positive, massive way. This is one of the greatest kept secrets of making money. And people who are broke don't get it. They think, no, just tell me how to make money. I want to trade Forex. I want to trade crypto. Tell me how to make money. How, 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 how. That's not how it works. Focusing on the how is going to keep you broke. Changing your energy will create the how. That will come, and then you make money. And you manifest what you want. I'll give you an example. Some people know the story. I was held in contempt of court because I wrote that book behind me. It you over there. Natural cures they don't want you to know about. I exposed the pharmaceutical industry. I exposed the opioid crisis with Purdue Pharmaceuticals and got a lot of people in Washington pissed off and had my radio show, the Kevin Trudeau radio show, which I'm going to be bringing back soon. This is not the radio show. This is, uh, this is just me giving you some free information to help you. But I was held in contempt of court and sent away to federal penitentiary for eight and a half years because they wanted to shut me up. Effectively, I, I mean that's the way I look at it. I didn't wasn't even charged effectively with a crime, contempt of court, really. So there is information out there that they don't want you to know about. Think about that. Think about that. So let's look at the groups and societies, or organizations, like the country club. People spend a million dollars initiation fee and maybe $250,000, $300,000 a year dues just to become a part of the country club because they want to associate with other like-minded people. This is the secret. It's the energy. It's not the how. The how will come. 
Yale University's secret society, Skull and Bones. Some of you have heard of it. Some of you haven't. Both President Bushes were member. Clinton, member. John Kerry, Secretary of State, member. Over the years, half of the Supreme Court justices, members. Skull and Bones started the CIA. Think about that. Started as the OSS and became the CIA. Start, started and ran by and still run by members of Skull and Bones, the secret society. President Bush in his book said, yes, when I was in Yale University, I was tapped on the shoulder and told that I was selected to be part of Skull and Bones, a secret society, George Bush went on to say, so secret, that's all I can say about it. Well, I've been to Skull and Bones Island where they have the Bonesmen there, one of the only people to be invited there who wasn't a Bonesman. Then you have Bohemian Grove out in California, a private society, a group. For years, Freemasons was a secret society, a private society. It's still very exclusive and very secretive. But if you look at the founding fathers of the United States of America, almost all of them were Freemasons. There are pictures of Benjamin Franklin and George Washington wearing the Freemason apron. The design of Washington, D.C. is the Freemason design. So these secret societies, these groups, these associations are incredibly powerful. The challenge is, how does one get into that secret society? Most of you will never be able, allowed to be part of the Brotherhood that I was a part of, Bohemian Grove, Skull and Bones, and then there's the Bilderberg Group. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you make a little money and then you join an exclusive country club. Or you make a little money and you become a member of the YPO, Young Presidents Organizations. Because you have to do something first to get into any of these groups. You have to do a little bit. So the Young Presidents Organization, YPO, is another, it's not a secret society, but it's an organization of like-minded people that pull for one another. It's so powerful to be part of these groups. This is what creates an energy change within you so that you can start manifesting money. When your attitude's right, facts don't count because when your attitude's right, all of a sudden the universe starts lining up to work in your favor. There was a great book. It's a mythical book, but it's still a good book called The Alchemist. And the phrase in there says, the universe will conspire to help you achieve all your goals and dreams. And that's really what happens. Everything seems to fall into place. Doors magically seem to open. Ideas come into your head. Opportunity just magically appears. I mean, in the most bizarre ways, you meet the right person at the right time. Everything falls into place. And the actions that you do create results if your energy is not right and you do the exact same action, you don't create results. And I, and I was going to give you the example. I mentioned I went away for eight and a half years. So I come out and there's a group of guys that have a company that they had been running while I was away. And this company, the sales of this company started here when I went away and started to go down. And then kind of flattened off. So while I was away, the sales went down and kind of flattened off. And I said, okay, we're going to change this. And in virtually 12 months, the business went up three times. It tripled in sales. Tripled. And went up five times in profits. Why? Because when I apply the energy properly, manifesting things, it happens automatically. This can happen to you as well. Not right now. But there's a couple things you have to do. So number one, you have to be part of a group or an association. Again, somebody saying, Kevin, what group? Can I, do I have to join Freemasons? No. I can't afford a country club. I'm not, I'm not a member of the Harvard Alumni Club. I'm not going to be invited to Yale Skull and Bones. I didn't go to Yale. Can't go to Bohemian Grove. I'm not going to be invited to that. 
No one's going to invite me to the Bilderberg group because I'm not a billionaire. I'm not going to get into the Brotherhood because I don't have these natural uh, spiritual or mental abilities where you get tapped or you're, it's through a bloodline. You get tapped into that and then trained. I'm not going to be part of that group. So what can I do? YPO, Young Presidents Organization, I can't be part of that group, so what do I do? You can start by joining Rotary Club or joining the Kiwanis or, jo or, jo or joining the Moose Lodge or the Elks Club or some organization where there are motivated, inspired, like-minded people. Maybe they're not super wealthy, but they want to be. Maybe they're just in the way. You can join some organization of like-minded people that are motivated and inspired that want more out of life and are willing to do whatever it takes to get more out of life, provided that it's ethical, legal, and moral. So you could join the Chamber of Commerce. That's a group of people. You can start someplace. You can join the club that I formed, the Global Information Network, which teaches everything that I know about success in the Success Mastery course that's exclusive to the members of our club and the Science of Personal Mastery course, which is exclusive to members of our club. You can do that. But start someplace. You have to be part of some organization. This is absolutely critical because what happens is, and we're going to kind of go off the rails here and talk about energy, and some of you are rolling your eyes. Okay, again, you know, when I first heard about energy, I rolled my eyes. And the guy saw me ro roll his eyes. And he said, if I make more money in a day, than you have in the last five years. Who's the fool, Kevin? Who's the dummy? And that was like a slap in the face, but at the same time I appreciated it because I became teachable in that moment. You have to be teachable. What is your teachability index? Teachable means what is your willingness to learn? Most importantly, what is your willingness to accept change? You can't continue to think like you've always thought and expect a different result. You can't continue to do what you've always done and expect a different result. Someone says, Kevin, what do I have to do in order to become successful? I said, well, let me observe you for a couple days. And I observe them and I say, you have to change everything in your life because you're basically uh, are a person who has failure habits. You don't have success habits, you have failure habits. Successful people have success habits. What's the most common denominator? They're all part of a group. They have an association. They're plugged in. Why? Energy. Number one, one group of people are part of a family. The Kennedys. Royalty. Through bloodline, through DNA, there is a connection with all the other people in the family. And when one person is inspired and motivated, that energy connects to all the other people who have the same DNA. It magic, no matter where they are on the planet, they can be all over the planet, and in one person's inspired, it connects with everybody. And so what happens is, is it juices everybody up. This is why success breeds success. It's through the DNA line. And if one person is low, the other, other people in the family can feel it, and they can change their energy and affect that person many times. Not always, but many times. So this is why family DNA is so critical. And this is why throughout history, royalty and wealthy families saying, you can't marry that person because their DNA is like loser DNA. And we don't want that into our family. We don't want you to have children and have that loser DNA. We want winner DNA. So you have to marry somebody from that other wealthy family or that other royalty family. Nobody wants to hear this, but this is the fact of, of life in these, in these levels. Think about that. And you can think about some particular royal couples right now where there's that particular problem going on. And that's why the, that's why the, the, that's why the conflict. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying this is what actually happens. And this is how people at the higher levels think. Well, you don't come from the right DNA, right? I didn't come from the right DNA. My dad was a great guy, but he was a welder. Never went to college. My mom was a great woman, uh, great cook, great mom, but she never went to college. So where's my DNA, right? And my grandfather, you know, 
he didn't have the right DNA. He never went to college. My grandmothers never went to college. You know, nobody in my lineage went to college ever. They were all like farmers and peasants. So I didn't have any DNA. So how am I going to change it? You connect with people who aren't family in a club so that there's a DNA connection. Many of these clubs, you make oaths or you make, um, you get initiations and that connects you energetically, not through the DNA, but energetically to each other. Like in the YPO, I remember I had a friend of mine who was a member of YPO and he was struggling. His company was struggling and his relationship with his wife was struggling. And he was there, I was in, in his beautiful office and he was a little bit depressed and low. And I said, you know, what are you doing to kind of address this? And he goes, well, I called a round table with my YPO brothers. I go, what's that? He says, well, when one of us has a problem, whether it's a business problem or a personal problem, we can call a round table where we basically get five or six or seven, eight, eight people together, men and women who are, you know, in, in our group. And they come to support me. And I tell them what my problem is. And they give their advice. But most importantly, their energy, and he said this, they're energetically supporting me. And when I leave, even if I don't have any advice, I've been changed. And he goes, it's an incredibly powerful process and I really don't understand it. I said, well, let me know how it goes. He goes, yeah. I've done it. He goes, I've been in, on the other side. So I've, I've seen how people tell me it's been changed, so I'm going to see how it goes. So he went to this meeting. I see him about two weeks later. And he says, man, you're looking good. How are you feeling? He goes, well, the business is still struggling. He goes, and my relationship is uh, still struggling. He goes, but I feel fantastic. I had that, that round table. And man, I'll tell you what, I just changed. And I know things are going to start turning around. About two or three months later, I saw him again. How you doing? He goes, well, you know, I uh, had to make some cuts in the business. I didn't want to make them. I didn't like to make them. But it was, the, it was the right thing to do. And actually now our business is leaner and better. And our sales are going up in addition to cutting overheads. So now our margins are better than ever before. He goes, in just a few short months after my round table, all of a sudden things are great. And I go, how's your relationship with your wife? He goes, well, you know, when you're feeling good about your business, if you're a guy and you're feeling good about your business, you kind of feel like Superman. And then the wife kind of feels that you have that confidence and she's attracted to you. He goes, yeah, she's been kind of throwing herself at me. And I'll tell you what, it's been a lot of passion more than in, in, the, in the previous few years. It's, so it's gotten better. So I said, would you say that this round table has really affected every aspect of your life? How about, how about your health? He goes, well, I didn't really have a health problem, but I can tell you right now, I'm sleeping great. I'm not tossing and turning. I'm not stressed out. Uh, I'm not like eating like a, like a pig because of stress. He goes, I feel physically great. I have a lot of physical energy. I feel strong. I feel mentally clear. I feel secure. I feel this great sense of certainty. I feel like I'm on my purpose. Can you understand the power of such a simple thing? Why it's so important to be part of that group? an association, a club, an organization. Think about it. So this is one of the greatest kept secrets to making money, being part of that group. Again, there's a lot of options out there. Global Information Network obviously is one of those. That's the organization that I founded. And that's a group where people pull for one another and we connect very strongly on an energetic basis. So people that are part of our group, it's almost like a fraternal organization where both men and women of all um, ages, from all over the world, from all religious beliefs, from all backgrounds, get together and support each other because they look at everyone equally as an extension and expression of the one universal love and light and consciousness that's all things. It's an amazing organization and group of people. So that's number one. You have to be part of some group. Number two, you have to have a mastermind. This is the other common denominator which 100% of all successful people have. And I'll just define mastermind very clearly and simply. There are several types of masterminds, but when it comes to making money, it's the business mastermind. And the business mastermind is this. You have a group of people, and it could be you and your business partner. It could be you and your accountant. It could be you and your operations manager. It could be you and your spouse. It could be you and one of your children. It could be you and a friend. But whoever it is, they have to be working on the same business or the same mission. Now, 
Let's say you have a job. How do you set up a mastermind? Well, you can set up a mastermind with your family because as a group, as a family, you decide that you want to get a lake house. This is the family goal. So now the mastermind is the family. They all have to pitch in either with thoughts, energy, encouragement, motivation, or actually some actions. But they're working together and you meet together on the same mission and the same goal. Our goal, our dream is to get that lake house. We have to figure out how to do it. We're a team here. And that's your mastermind. So the mastermind, number one, is a group of people, usually no more than 10, unless you're in this massive organization. It's a group of people that are doing the same mission. If you have a small company, it's real simple. It's your employees. That's the mastermind. So if you have three or four or five or six employees, you all work for the same company. Maybe you own the company. Maybe you don't. But everybody is working on the same thing to make the company grow and profitable, hopefully to positively impact people with the product or service that you offer. And you're working together on the same mission, the same purpose. We're all on the same team. We all have the same goal. We all have the same objective. And then the second thing is, you must work in harmony together. You can't have conflict. If you're having conflict, <clears throat> it's got to get resolved. you got to resolve that conflict. You can't have a powerful mastermind that's effective, that works, if you have conflict with the people in the mastermind. This is critical. And this is an area that most people don't grasp. Conflict seems to be just a normal part of life. When you do have conflict, which will come up, it has to be addressed and it has to be sorted out. <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch of techniques for what's called conflict resolution. So that's a critical aspect. But these are two powerful aspects <clears throat> that you can apply and use that can help you make money in your life. Now there's one thing that will stop you from making money. And that is what we call energetic blocks or energetic stops. In your field, there are 33, which happens to be the same number of degrees in masonry, by the way. There are 33, and I learned this back in the 70s, from some of the wealthiest people on the planet in the Brotherhood. There are 33 energies or frequencies that stop people from making money. One, for example, is a frequency which prevents you, stops you from starting a project. That's one of them. And we know this. Some people just can't get started. It's almost like they're being held back. It's like somebody's just holding you back or pushing against you, restricting you from getting started. And you just can't seem to get started. Another energetic block is you can't finish something when you get started. Well, you, you can start something, but you never finish it. You never follow up and follow through. Everything's left dangling. Nothing ever gets completed. It gets started, but never completed. The inability to complete things. That is an energetic stop. There's many others that are areas that have to be addressed. Now, this is also something that is a 100% common denominator of all wealthy people. They have many of these blocks, not necessarily all of them, but many of these energetic blocks blown out. They have removed or cleared these energetic blocks. And I'll tell you what happened to me. Back in the 70s, I was applying the material I was learning from the Brotherhood. And I wanted to make money. When your energy is right, things will come to you. As soon as I decided I wanted to make money and get rich, I didn't know how. But I started dreaming. I started thinking about, yeah, I want a Rolls Royce. I want a limousine. I want a mansion. I want a penthouse. I want to travel to Hawaii. I want to go to Europe. I want to have my own chef. I want to have a Rolex watch with diamonds. I want to have custom-made clothes. It's When you start thinking about physical things, it's a little easier, even though they're, they're not that important. Sp 
spirituality, a sense of peace and love and compassion. Those are the most important things, joy and happiness and bliss. But it's easy to focus on physical things. <clears throat> so we do that as a focal point or a point of contact in the physical universe so we can manifest. And then we're working on the inner uh, joy at the same time, which is a beautiful balance. So you have stuff in the physical universe, but you're not attached to it. And you have this inner peace and joy and as well as dynamic physical health. Hey, I'm very old. You know, I, I was doing this from the early 70s. People say, how old is this guy? I don't, I've never taken a prescription drug. I mean, I'm the natural, I'm the nat, it's over there. I'm the natural cures guy. See the book, Natural Cures? I've never, never taken a prescription drug, an aspirin, a Tylenol. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't need this stuff. I don't have any high blood pressure or uh, whatever. I, I have no idea. So I'm pretty, pretty darn healthy. So health, material success, feeling uh, that you're uh, fulfilled in terms of mission and purpose, achieving what you want, manifesting what you want in life, great relationships. This is what life is about, joy, peace, and happiness. When I decided I wanted to make money, all of a sudden, using the techniques that I learned, an opportunity came up. I met a guy by the name of Ben Suarez through his book, Seven Steps to Freedom, How to Escape the American Rat Race. Well, I wasn't in the American Rat Race yet because I was in the, it was in the 70s. I was still living at home, but I read this book. It's, it's, it, the, the book doesn't apply today because it was about direct mail, how to make money in direct mail, and everything in the book is antiquated because it was about how things worked back in the 70s, so you can't apply anything from it today. But I read this book, it was about that thick, and I studied it, man. So I said, I'm going to start doing this. So I put together a couple hundred dollars, and I put an ad, and I tried my direct mail, and it failed. So I went back to my uncle in the Brotherhood. That was my mentor. We, we call them the uncle or an aunt if it was a woman. Uh, it was a gentleman who kind of was assigned to me to train me to be, I was, uh, I was the, uh, he was my mentor, if you will. My master, right? <laughs> he was my mentor. <laughs> we called him an uncle, made it much more palatable. So I went to him and said, listen, I don't understand what's happening. It didn't work. I'm very bummed out and depressed. Okay. And then he told me about the 33 different areas of uh, blocks and stops that can prevent you from making money. He says, let's clear out two of them. And so we went through these processes. They're called the money processes. And I cleared out those two things. He says, okay. Um, we'll meet again. He goes, let's, let's see what happens. So I went back. I looked at my ad. I thought, the ad looks good. I looked at my direct mail piece that I wrote. I go, the direct mail piece looks good. Well, maybe I'll just change this headline. But I don't know. Well, let me try it again. So I placed the same ad. I sent out the same direct mail piece. I just changed the headline. Nothing big. It makes no difference. And all of a sudden, the mailman came to the house, and he knocked on the door. I happened to be home. It was 3.30 in the afternoon. That's when the mailman came to my house. And he opened the door, and he had one of these big mail sacks, you know, big mail bag. And he looked at me, and he goes, this is for you. And I go, because I knew all the envelopes were full of money. Orders. I almost started to cry. And I grabbed it, and I, I, this is going to take me all night. And it did. I opened up every one of these things, and inside was $35 in cash. One. This is back in the 70s, all night long. These are orders. How could it be that it was the same ad, the same direct mail piece, just a headline change, nothing else? How could it go from zero orders, I mean, I got a couple, nothing, to over a thousand orders in a day. And then every day the mailman would come to the door with the bag. And I'm like, oh my God. <clears throat> I call up my uncle, I gotta meet you. So we went together and I said, how is this working? And he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. He goes, Kevin, don't you realize that some people have the Midas touch. You ever hear that phrase? Some people, no matter what they do, everything they touch turns to gold. 
I go, yeah. He goes, it's because the, the, the energy is cleared. The 33 areas that are holding people back is cleared. And then other people just struggle with making money their whole life. It's, they feel like there's a black cloud over their head or that everything's restricting them. And no matter what they do, something just doesn't turn out right. Nothing works out good for them. I go, yeah, it's almost like they're cursed. He goes, they are. There's effectively a curse on them, you could call it. But when you clear out the energy, it almost doesn't matter what you do. When you clear out these things, in, this is what the money process is all about. When you clear it out, then guess what happens? Number one, the right idea comes to mind, like changing the headline a little bit. That magically comes because you're not, you don't have the self-sabotage energy. But the windows of heaven, it actually is a spiritual principle. The windows of heaven are actually open. So the blessings that are being held back because of energy, like a glass ceiling, now it's open <clears throat> and now all the blessings pour into your life. You start making massive amounts of money. So this is just the beginning. I got a lot of stuff to share with you on money, on health, how to become healthy, dynamically healthy, look and feel young. You know, <clears throat> there are guys that I know that are 35, 40 years old and they have a little problem in the bedroom. I'm like, how is that possible? And then, you know, myself and others in their 70s, like, problem? Are you kidding me? You know, I was talking to one guy's wife, 72, and we were chatting and we were, we were very open about things. And I said, you know, you, you guys are always, you know, you can't, can't kind of keep your hands off each other. You've been married a long time. The passion seems to be there. She goes, the passion's there. She says, after all these years, the passion's still there. And she says, and th the guy is amazing in bed. It's like not one time a week, but several times a night with no Viagra and everything like that. And we laughed and laughed because, you know, we can have that open conversation about a beautiful part of life, sexuality. So there's a lot I want to tell you about health, about inner peace, joy, and happiness, compassion. Some people call it enlightenment or self-realization. This is the most beautiful part of life. When you have this sense of peace and joy and you see everyone for who they truly are, truly, truly are which is light, it's the same light that's in you, that's in them, that everyone is an extension, an expression of the one love, light, and consciousness that's all things. When you really can see and sense and feel that energy, there's a joy within you that you can't put into words. It's ineffable. It's beyond comprehension, and it's beyond explanation. And then making money, manifesting what you want, whether you want a relationship or money, it's all available to you. I can tell you this not from I know about it or I read about it in some books or I went to some seminars. It's something that was taught to me through the Brotherhood, which the information there you can't get anywhere else. And then I applied it. And then through personal experience. And then I taught it to some others and watched it work. My, my brothers and sisters in the Brotherhood, my brothers and sisters in the Global Information Network, we see it happen all the time, the miracles that happen because they're going through the Science of Personal Mastery course that I wrote and the Success Mastery course, which is all the training I got in the Brotherhood, all codified for the first time in history for our members. It's all there. It's all there. So I have a lot more information to share. Make sure you watch these videos. It's really important that you like the video because the number of people and subscribers on this channel is really critical. So I'm going to just give you a couple to-dos and you'll get more free information from me. Number one, like the video. Number two, share it with as many people as you can. Subscribe to the channel. Those are really important. Become, uh, uh, join the Telegram group. I have a fan club which was started several years ago. It's called the Kevin Trudeau Fan Club. If you join that Telegram channel, I, I leave a lot of free voicemail messages there. Uh, it's all free training, so you can check that out. And there's some other websites you can get free training that I put together, gurukev.com. You can sign up and get free. It's totally free uh, training right there. The lessons are spectacular. Nuggets of Gold. These, these are my two newest books, Nuggets of Gold. These are available at Amazon. You can also go to nuggetsofgold.com. So these two books are available. You can go to ktfanclub.com. You can also join our Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and so forth. But there's a lot more stuff coming. And 
I am going to be delivering for the first time ever, and maybe the last, the money processes that I talked about coming up soon. So if you're interested in getting information on the money processes seminar, it's three days. You can go to the first day or you can go to all three days. Just send an email to training at kevintrudeau.com and we'll send you more information. Training at kevintrudeau.com. The seats are extremely limited. Uh, I just went to the hotel. We can't expand the ballroom. They told me that's that's the size, so we're looking at the exact numbers. So we have uh, some seats available. It's going to be in the fall. We're going to have the event. It's first come, first serve. But I can tell you this. When you go through those money processes, it removes everything that you know is there. You know it's there. It's going to remove everything that's stopping you from manifesting money and manifesting all your goals, dreams, and desires. I'm Kevin Trudeau. Thanks for listening. Remember, God loves you. And I don't mean that in some flippant way. The universe loves you. The universal consciousness, which is all things, which is all love and light. You are pure love and you are loved. And I love you too. I want all your dreams and goals to come true. That's my goal. That's my dream. To see you go across stage, have me shake your hand and give you a hug and congratulate you on your success. That's what happened to me. I walked across stage and my uncle and my mentors and my brothers and sisters congratulated me and it was a wonderful feeling to have that type of love from people that weren't my family but they were better than family closer to me than family that can happen to you too spread the word share this video with as many people as you can watch the other videos on the channels i got one that tells you a little bit about my background uh and some other ones as well we'll see you next time much love and i will see you at the top.